Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we go through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try our best to understand what it is we can expect to happen in the end times, or the times Jesus referred to as the end of the age. And we've been going through the book of Revelation verse by verse. And where we are at this point is John has been taken up in the spirit to the throne room of God where we're given a chance to look around and there's a lot of awesome things to see in the throne room of God. And then he notices that God has a scroll in his hand with seven seals and has determined that only Jesus Christ is worthy to open those seals. And we've also determined what that scroll is, is that scroll is the prophetic, divine, appointed time for God's kingdom to come to earth just as it is mm -hmm in heaven and it is only Jesus who can break those seals and there's a lot that's going to happen uh, during that time leading up to heaven here on earth. So we've gotten through the first seal. When that first seal was broken, uh, we heard from one of the four living creatures around the throne of my God to say, come and see. And what we saw there was a white horse who was given authority to determine who the kings of the earth are. I believe that seal has already been broken. And then the second seal was broken, and another living creature said, Come and see. And what we saw there was a red horse who was given a great sword. Now, this horse was given authority to break out war throughout the entire planet, and I think that's what we're about to experience. And then now we're at the third seal, and we're just going to pick it up right there in Revelation 6, verse 5. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil or the wine. Again, keep in mind, we're seeing this in the throne room of God. Now these horses are, I think, widely misinterpreted. Um, oftentimes, people will refer to these as kind of a sign, but really these are literal spiritual warriors of God that we saw in Zechariah's time. Zechariah actually saw them twice. We're going to take a look at the second time today. Uh, but we're seeing they are, they are doing exactly what it is God asked them to do. Now this particular horseman has a scale in his hand. So let's kind of break down what's happening when this third seal is broken and what is this horseman doing? Now, he has scales in his hand. Now, uh, the word that in Greek that's used for this word scale is zygon, and zygon is a coupling or a beam or balance. It's bringing two things together in a balance. Um, and there, or it's connecting two parts or pairing two items. And what we see is that he is essentially showing that there's a, an amount of wheat or barley that equals what's referred to as a denarius on this balance. So we're going to kind of leave Revelation for a moment. Let's try to understand what's going on with the wheat, what's going on with the barley, and what's going on with these denarius. So let's take a look at Matthew first, because in Matthew 24, Jesus talks about this end time um, and I believe he's going to say what, what this is here. So we're going to take a look at Matthew 24. Um, and we're just going to pick it up in verses 3 through 8. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So they're, talking, you know, they're asking him, how will we know the, that your, your second coming is almost here? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. So there we're looking at the Antichrist, or really many that are going to claim to be Christ. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. So there's our red horseman. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we're looking at things that must happen first. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So what Jesus is saying here in Matthew 24, that the beginning of this tribulation is going to begin with war, famine, pestilence, and earthquakes. And these are the beginning of sorrows. So... 
what most people would interpret this horseman as being is somebody that brings this famine to the land. So if we go back to Revelation 6.6, 6, I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. So let's kind of take a look at what is this and how can we call this famine? How can we say that this horseman is bringing famine to the earth? Well, first let's talk about what a denarius is. A denarius was a Roman silver coin that typically had the value of one day's wage work for the layman, so to say. And we can kind of see that. Let's, let's look at Matthew again because Jesus has a couple times he talks about this denarius. So let's go to Matthew 20. In Matthew 20, Jesus is given the parable of the workers in the vineyard. And it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And then it goes on to uh, kind of what this parable means. That you know, But he refers to a denarius as being one day's labor. Um, now he does talk about this denarius one more time. Let's go to Matthew 22. In Matthew 22, beginning in 15, the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent to him their disciples with their Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me? You hypocrites, show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and God the things that are God. So ultimately what we're seeing here is this horseman is given a scale, essentially saying, you know, for a denarius, a day's wager, what you can receive is you can receive a quart of wheat. And ultimately, the point is, is throughout the entire earth, people are being essentially going to have to work all day just for food, is really what this looks like. Now, a quart of wheat or three quarts of barley was traditionally given to Roman soldiers as a day's uh, food. So we can kind of confirm that one or the other will give you what you need for the day, but it's a day's wage that will get you enough to eat. So if you had a family, you know, this isn't going to be able to provide at all. So we're looking at this state of uh, the world where people are just working their tails off just to be able to simply survive. So if we go back to Revelation 6.6, 6, then he says, do not harm the oil or the wine. Now, there's a couple things that could be determined about this. Why the oil and the wine? Well, some would interpret this as these are luxury items. So there may be this separation of those that have and those that have not. So the people that you know have luxury items like oil and wine uh, versus those that are working all day long just to simply get a uh, day's worth of food. But I don't believe that's what that is. I think that's a lot of assumptions and there's you know, times we can make assumptions, but there's times where the Bible actually talks about what these things are. And I believe this is something totally different when he says, do not harm the oil and the wine. So let's go to Psalm 104 for a second. In Psalm 104, what we're seeing here is this is a praise to the sovereign God for his creation and providence. And ultimately what's taking place here is it is a psalm to God. Um, and it talks about his omnipotence and that he laid the foundations of the earth, um, that it shall not be moved forever. And then it goes to a section and it goes to this point where he talks about how God provides then for every beast of the field, for everybody. And then it gets to a section in 14 and 15. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle, the vegetation for the service of man, that he might bring forth food from the earth, and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. And then if we go on to throughout the psalm, it then goes into 31 through 35 at the end. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. 
I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. But the Lord, O oh my soul, praise the Lord. So I think what we're seeing here is God is going to bring famine to the land. Um, and as a result, there's going to be these rise of those who love God. And we're going to get into what the witnesses are later. And these witnesses are just many, many people who are praising God and declaring his name. And the Antichrist and the beast ultimately wages war against them. So I believe what God is saying is make sure that those are being provided for, that they have the ability to have a glad heart and that their faces are shining. That's very important that that take place in order for them to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I believe that's what that is. So ultimately in Revelation 6.6, 6, what they're saying is, you know, there's going to be this famine where people are going to have to work all day long just to get enough food for that day. And that's it. And then there's this other point where then those other people who are proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, they're starting to rise, but God is providing for them exactly what they need to make sure they have a glad heart and that their faces are shining so they can proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. So let's kind of come back for a moment to Zechariah um, because Zechariah saw these four horsemen and um, then he later sees them. So in Zechariah 1, he sees these, these horses in the hollow among the myrtle trees. And they say that they go to, throughout the earth to and fro to make sure that uh, they wage war or wage peace. They determine the rise and falls of empires. And if we go to Zechariah a little further, in Zechariah 4, what we see is that there's these vision of these lampstands. And I just want to talk about that because of the oil specifically. Um, he sees essentially this vision of a lampstand that's got two olive, trails, olive trees feeding it oil. If we jump to 11, then I answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees, one at the right of the lampstand and the other at its left? And I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacle of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? So ultimately what's happening is the Holy Spirit is feeding golden oil into those who are witnessing for Jesus Christ. Um, if you go on to Zechariah 7, then it goes on to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And then if you go into Zechariah 8, it goes into the ruling of Jesus Christ. But there's a peculiar place that happens in 6. Um, where it says, Then I turned and raised my eyes and looked, and behold, four chariots were coming from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of bronze. With the first chariot were red horses, and the second chariot black horses, while the third chariot white horses, with the fourth chariot dappled horses, strong steeds. Then I answered and said to the angel who talked with me, Who are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said to me, These are four spirits of heaven who go out from their station before the Lord of all the earth. So ultimately what's taking place here is Zechariah is seeing, you know, now not just these horsemen among the myrtle trees, but now they're, they're hopping into chariots and being led by chariots. So, um, and, he, and he clearly states here in 6, 5, And the angel answered and said to me, These are four spirits of heaven who go out from the stations before the Lord of all the earth. So we can't say that these are just images of the Antichrist or images of famine or images of war. These are literal spiritual warriors of God who first, first seal, determine the kings of the earth. They have the authority to, for the rise and fall of kings and empires. Second, break out war on the earth. And third, bring about famine. But make sure that those who are preaching the gospel are being provided for. Now, I say that part because it's so incredibly important as Christians that we see revelation of this. We're not... The rapture of the church is not a pre-tribulation rapture. And, you know, we, we did an episode on that. Well, definitely when we get to that part where the rapture actually occurs, it's very clear that it is near the end that the rapture of the church occurs. Um, but there's definitely a need to witness Jesus Christ and proclaim Jesus Christ. And God's going to provide for it. And it's very important we see it like that. So um, I hope this helps. Um, you know, again, I think this third horse, 
horseman is ultimately it's it, he's bringing famine to the land and you have to work all day for enough food for one day one person and um, then we're going to see the rise of those who love and fear God and will give to those who follow God um, a glad heart and a face that shines and that's the important part because that's ultimately those proclaiming to the entire earth the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope this video helps. Love to hear your comments on this. Um, if you have any, put them in below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests and never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.